doctors quite a bit. He was very pale. You're going to sick kids hospital. You need to get to sick kids hospital and you need to leave right now. I just started to cry. Everything was leading to something being wrong. He was actually a pretty sick baby. He um, had a lot of stomach problems. Um, we had a lot of troubles trying to trying to feed him. Um, a lot of I want to say a lot of sleepless nights, but more so it seemed with him when you look back at it now. They sent us to Fergus for blood work. Um, I didn't even want to go. They had us instantly, and then they called on the way home and said, uh, you're going to Sick Kids Hospital. We didn't know at that point anything that was going on. They just said, you need to get to Sick Kids Hospital and you need to leave right now. My name is Sue Zupanek and I'm a nurse practitioner here at Sick Kids and I work in the outpatient oncology clinic and my specialty is leukemia and lymphoma. I didn't let David go. I was sitting in the bed beside him because it was tired. I, I just started to cry and I just didn't let him go. Um, Dave had mentioned the fact maybe it was like some sort of cancer and I told him he was crazy that it wasn't going to be and, but when the words came, I, I just hugged him and I went, I, he wasn't leaving where I could see him or touch him for the next little while, that was for sure. Fear, very much fear. Why, I, why him? I just dumbfounded him, I just... I couldn't think of why that God would do something like that to such a, a little fellow. I don't know, that was uh, just... Really angry too. I was really angry just why he had to be sick. Even though everything was leading to something being wrong, you don't, you don't really know right until uh, the actual words come out and then and then you're lost because um, it's something so beyond your control. Just after midnight they came in and told us that he had leukemia and it was acute lymphomic leukemia and it was type B. None of this we understood yet but um, and then um, they also told us that the transfusions was because his he only had one third of the red blood cell volume that he was supposed to have in his blood because the leukemia had taken over. It's the first thing that really pops into my mind is, is something that we could have done, something that might have happened when, when, uh, when David was younger that we could have possibly did that she just didn't think of. Um, just because the warning signs are so, I'm going to say vague, but, um, I mean, what's a what's a child to have an extra nap during a day, or what's a child to to, to decide not that they're not going to eat? Right? It's 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 uh, it's just different. You just it's something that you didn't think about looking back at uh, all the questions that we answered yes to um, to our different doctors was 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 pretty scary. The first time I think when we seen him in the hospital, you know, he was hooked up to all these machines and. His IV on his arm, his friend, called it his friend that he carried around with him. He got sick at the beginning and he lost his hair at the beginning, but it was only for a short period of time. He um, did react once to the, um, the anesthetic that he had to go under, but it was only once and um, he just had to stay there till, what was it, like nine o'clock at night for observation. observation. They're not allowed to leave the hospital. They have five different stages that they, the kids have to go through. The first four stages takes three months and that's intense chemo with all different kinds of technical names that I probably will never be able to repeat. And then the last stage lasts three years. For lymphoblastic leukemia, we use chemotherapy. All the kids get chemotherapy. Some of the kids will also get radiation to their heads, um, but that's only a very small percentage of the children with leukemia. And those children um, were I identified very early in their diagnosis as being positive in the, in the CNS or in the spinal fluid. And so they get cranial radiation as part of their treatment, but 
most children do not get any radiation, they get chemotherapy. Just half of the stuff that he went through, to sit there and have to get poked once every two weeks just to check his blood count, to get a needle stuck into his chest once a month and not complain about it, right? Like at first he fought because he was two, two almost three and he didn't know what was going on. So the strength there was to fight to not give in, to say, yeah, I'm gonna let you hurt me. To have to uh, hold um, your son down to, to get a chest poke, to, to get him, watch him get so worked up that he makes himself sick to his stomach um, because he doesn't want, doesn't want it to happen. Um, and it wasn't until the end that he noticed that, uh, that he realized that he couldn't do that. You don't realize with kids how how strong they are as a as an adult. You don't realize what a what a child is capable of doing. Um, the amount of the amount of pain that that gets inflicted on everybody on on yourself on on somebody else. We got lucky. I would say that he was so young when he when he had it, and he was lucky enough that he didn't know any better. He didn't know that other kids don't go to the hospital. Okay, I'm done. We're curing many kids already with leukemia. Um, if you look at lymphoblastic leukemia, our survival rates for children are about 80 to 85 percent. So that's outstanding. Um, and that's come a long way in the last 30 years. You know, if you looked at 1970, the cure rate for leukemia was about 50 percent. So in, in just 30 years, we've gone from 50 percent cure rate to an 85 percent survival rate. So I think you know, the answer to that question is we're almost there. Can we eliminate it altogether and not have children have leukemia? you know, we're, we're a bit away from that. Lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common type of leukemia in childhood, so it accounts for about probably 70% of all childhood leukemia. Um, what it is is it's a very immature white blood cell or blast cell that doesn't listen to the signals that it needs to, to sort of destroy itself and it grows uncontrollably and it doesn't listen to all these you know, signs that says you're an, an abnormal cell and you need to stop growing. It just grows out of control. The peak age of lymphoblastic leukemia in children is between two and five years. And we don't know, we actually don't know why that age group is more susceptible. You would never have known from the day he got into the hospital that he was sick. He is the strongest per person I have ever met and anybody you talk to will say the same thing. David cannot go anywhere without making friends. It's ridiculous. Um, there's an organization called Clarkie's Kids where uh, NHL hockey player for the New Jersey Devils, David Clarkson, runs. And from like the first three minutes that they met, David and him were buddies. They call each other on the phone all the time. He just, every person he would meet, is, he falls in love with them. It's not hard. So when, when, after we went through this with David when he, the first year that he was out of the hospital, we didn't, I mean, going in there, we didn't realize what, uh, what, uh, what was all involved with it, um, what it takes um, to, to go through something like this. Money-wise. Money-wise, um, that kind of thing. It, uh, we got really lucky um, from our standpoint that, that he was on maternity leave at the time. Um, I know it, it sounds silly, but um, there was a state steady check coming in for her not being at work, and that uh, I work for a company that uh, that believes in family first before anything, and that uh, I was able to keep my steady paycheck coming in. Being in a small community with small community cash came in. Yeah, we like had crazy uh, just to help out, and when we were at the hospital, we seen people from like bigger cities that had nothing and were having to leave their kids to go to work so the kid had to be at the hospital by themselves. So Dave really wanted to help. So, yeah, so we thought that we would, I thought at first we would try and raise some money to to uh, uh, to help give back to people in, in, in areas that, that we could, uh, to, to help them out. Uh, the first year we did it in about six weeks. Uh, we, we kind of threw it together in about six weeks. Uh, we did it at the uh, Fairview Golf and Country Club, just 18 holes of golf and dinner. Uh, we raised about $2,000, did some hair cutting afterwards. And you're going to come down and sit, you have to sit, you can't be silly like that. You're going to come and sit? 
Is this okay? Oh, of course. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to talk. No, no, no. no. Just, you can talk in a minute. Just you can talk in a minute. the golf tournament, okay? And then you can. Um, yeah, the second year we raised $10,000, which completely blew us out of the water. The third year we made uh, just over $18,000. And then this year we made twenty-four thousand uh, dollars, just over twenty-four thousand dollars this year in a, in a one-day event. I've taught kindergarten for many years, and I had the luxury of having David Valley as my student. David is one of those children that you just absolutely adore. It, in a heartbeat, he's wiggled his way into your heart. Uh, he. He's an, such an interesting child because he loves to learn. He has that love and you can see it in his eyes, the sparkle. You, he asks questions, he's so curious. It was a, a pleasure to be able to work with him. He inspires everyone around him. David is one of those children that comes into your life that changes it forever <laughs> because he's inspiring. He fought so hard and he has so much energy. And in spite of that all, he never complains. He's always happy. And that sparkle in his eye, it just radiates. And I think I, I'm positive I must have put it on this report card comment about the sparkle because he comes in and he's bouncy and he's happy and he, he talks fast and he moves fast and he thinks fast and yet, um, it's just such a pleasure to have that in your life. It's so it's such a pleasure to have something so positive enter your life, knowing that it has not been easy for him. And you would never know from him that it has been the case. So for me, it has been an inspiration, and um, I will forever be changed as a teacher. Kids have to do to get through what, what you did. Take yellow pills and be brave. It must be hard to see that the sun is shining when the world has put so many clouds in the skies, and it must be hard to see the path before you and as you stop to wipe the tears from your eyes oh you can't and you can't believe and you can't believe just how much joy you can get and you can receive from the strength of a boy Oh, you can't, you can't believe You can't believe just how much joy You can get and you can receive From the strength of a boy